Today on Delta Safari, we head deep into the Delta to explore Cliff's Landing. I'm your host, Stu Donald. Let's head to the Delta. I'm at a great place today. This is Cliff's Landing. And there's some speculation on the origin of the name. Could it be those cliffs right up there? Or was it the fact that the guy that used to run this place was named Cliff? I think both are probably true. But uh, this is on the Tensaw River, which you can see there above me. And I have been coming to this launch right here for most of my life. Just down that way is the Basin Lake, which is phenomenal fishing. And then down this way to the left is Hurricane Bayou, which is also great fishing. As you can see, we've got plenty of trees, Spanish moss in them. Give you a good view of the whole launch here. This is operated by the Baldwin County Parks Association. And this is one of the first days of spring. Coastal spring starts in mid-February. Ignore what you see on the calendar. Let's, let's get some footage, shall we? There's a whole lot of important information here. So feel free to go back through this section and pause it and zoom and whatnot. Especially the whatnot. Now this being the Tensaw River here, this is the easternmost part of the Delta proper, but Going this way, which is further east, you have a whole bunch of tributaries like I talked about with uh, Hurricane Bayou, Babinet Creek, probably hundreds of streams and brooks and, and unnamed little trickling streams of water. But going straight out that way, that takes you into the heart of the most central part of the Delta. Not a whole lot of people live there, and the ones that do, have to get to their home by boat. There's no roads up in that area. And up in here also is where you're gonna find some of the incredible things that this Delta has. Like for instance, uh, the Bottle Creek Indian Mound is up in there. The largest cypress tree in the state of Alabama is up in there. And uh, Oh, just all kinds of mystery, all kinds of adventure. Hey, I want to draw your attention. What you see there floating in the water, that is not an alligator. That is just a chunk of wood. And that's one of the things that makes navigating this river so dangerous. Did you see how most of it is underneath the water? If you're flying along in a bass boat or a ski doo or something, you may be on top of that before you ever spot it. It makes this river very treacherous. With that, just done. Look at that. Imagine living in one of these houseboats right here on the Tinsaw. 
having that as your backyard. I have a whole lot of great memories of growing up on this delta and most of them started with launching a boat here at Cliff's Landing. One of the memories that, that comes to mind was coming in from a day of fishing and there was a fish fry going on up here and it was a uh, political fundraiser for legendary controversial Alabama governor George C. Wallace. So I'm sitting here walking around and I see a couple of people come walking out of there and apparently there's now a hiking trail up here. More than likely part of the Alabama Coastal Bird Watching Trail. Well, I hadn't really planned on going fishing when I came down here, but when I saw that couple come out on this hiking trail, so I thought, I wonder if this leads to a good fishing spot. So let's take a look and see. This is not any kind of official hiking trail, I don't think. <laughs> it's not well kept if it is. But our goal is to find a spot to go fishing. When you're up here on the Delta, it's important to look for water moccasins. We've got both kinds here, cottonmouth and copperhead. And you know, you'll want to watch where you step. But here's something they don't generally teach you. You want to look in the trees too, because cottonmouth love to hang on limbs and drop on their prey. Don't be prey. Well, looks like I found my way down to the river. Let's see if we can catch something. Okay, as you can see, not a very big spot. We're gonna keep hiking, see if we can't find something better. First butterfly of the spring right there. First butterfly of the spring. See a nice little wide trail here. And there's the cliffs over Cliff's Landing. It may have also been owned by a guy named Cliff. Great looking bluff though. Awesome. Well, this looks like a pretty good spot. At least a little better access to the water. come up from down the hill that way and the path continues up there but this is kind of interesting I'm no archaeologist but I'm willing to bet that, that is legitimate signs of human habitation right there that probably used to be a business or a home that sat on this bluff over the Tensaw River Imagine waking up to that view in the morning. All right, I have explored this little trail <laughs> about as far as it goes. As you can see, the trail is actually asphalt. This used to be a driveway or a road to, I'm guessing a trailer park or, you know, campground because of the parking area that's up there, but there's no other building. And it may simply be a case of this was going to be a campground or trailer park and any one of a million things went wrong and it just stalled and nothing ever became of it 
except this nice little hiking trail right next to the Tensaw River. It's a nice little hike though. I figured since they had that wonderful pier back at the boat launch and I already went to the trouble to get my fishing gear out, Now if you look beyond the dock here where everybody's getting on and off their boats, you'll see a dilapidated pier behind it. Well, on the other side of that, when I was a kid growing up, was a ship graveyard. There were a couple of old freighters or tankers or something that were just sitting there rusting out. I think after a few hurricanes really did some damage, the state went and got them out of the way. You can see it's a wonderful little park here. Some picnic tables that are covered over there. There's a little, little bar up there called the River Pub. Just a nice little place to have a drink right here on the river. You've got this incredible parking lot. Down there are some houseboats. I mean, that wouldn't be a good way to kill a weekend. You wouldn't even have to launch the boat. Just drop a worm right off your dock. The reason I've come here is to visit a new barbecue place. I have not tried it yet, but it is all the rage here in Baldwin County. It's called Shotgun. We're about to go check it out. I first heard about Shotgun Barbecue from my co-host on Sip and Chew, Mike Bailey, who heard about it from a group on Facebook called Baldwin County Foodie Group. So I'm here to, the, to check it out. Mike had rave reviews of it. Everyone in the Baldwin County foodie group has raved about it. So we're gonna see what all the fuss is about. I can tell you this though, they have great taste in YouTube shows. I wanted to get a good idea of what their barbecue is about. So I got two of the most popular items, the beef brisket, and the spare ribs. And for my sides, I got my favorites with barbecue, baked beans and potato salad. I know you may find this hard to believe looking at my slender stature, but I have judged a barbecue contest or two in my day. And this one hit all of the notes. There was a great bark, good smoke flavor, cooked perfectly. That semicircle when you bite into a rib, that's a sign of a perfectly cooked rib. If it falls off the bone, it's overcooked. And that brisket was absolutely dreamy. y'all with your cell phones and you swiping and you, you fingers and thumbs you know what i do i click that there subscribe button look at what i just did and you know what i probably do after that is click the like button 